okay hello everyone good evening hope you all are doing great guys today we are going to learn rip routing protocol so first let me share my screen with you and hope now my screen is visible okay so rip stand for routing information protocol it is an application layer protocol which is used to exchange routing table between routers as i told you in dynamic routing like why we come up with dynamic routing so that router can exchange their routing table dynamically right because implementing a static routing in large network is very complicated that's why we come up with dynamic routing and in dynamic routing first routing protocol is rip 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 routing protocol so today we will try to cover entire things about rip protocol and in you know tomorrow videos in tomorrow class we will discuss eigrp protocol so without wasting our time let's begin rip before that let me open gns3 also so that i can design one a small topology there okay so let's say i have one topology i have simple topology with two routers r1 and r2 both are connected with one lan here we are running one lan network this is my switch let's say one lan is connected over here and one lan is connected over here with this router these devices are connected like this r1 router 1 R2, router 2, this is switch 1, and this one is switch 2. Here we are running one network, let's say 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And here also we are running one network, let's say 20.1.1.0 slash 24. And between router 1 and router 2, we are running 2L network, 2L.1.1.0 slash 24. Here IP address is, let's say 12. dot one and here IP address is let's say 12 dot two fine guys now in this scenario if I will talk about routing table of router one so router one will have two number of network inside their routing table in the same way router two will also have two number of network in their routing table if I will talk about routing table of R1 let's say this is routing table of R1 and this is routing table of R2 by default Inside the routing table of router, there will be directly connected network only. Like one network is directly connected, that is directly connected 10.1.1.0 slash 24. On which interface, let's say this network is connected on fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. This is my fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. This is F0 slash 0. And this is F0 slash 1, let's say F0 slash 1. Again, this one is also F0 slash 0. And this one is F0 slash 1. Here we are running IP address 10.1. Here we are running IP address 20.1. So two network are directly connected with router 1 and two network are directly connected with router 2. Right. So if I will talk about routing table of R1. So inside the routing table of R1, there will be this network 10.1.1.0 slash 24 is directly connected on fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. After that, one more network is directly connected on fast ethernet one zero slash one that is c that is 12.1.1.0 slash 24 this network is directly connected on fast ethernet zero slash one in the same way if i will talk about routing table of r2 so r2 will also have two number of network one is 20 dot c 20 dot 1.1.0 slash 24 is directly connected on fast ethernet zero slash zero and one more network are there that is 12.1.1.0 slash 24 is directly connected on fast ethernet 0 slash 1 right okay so this is routing table of r1 and r2 now let's say here we have one user connected with switch 1 here i have one user connected with switch 1 and here also we have one user connected with switch 2 this user ip address is this user IP address is let's say 10.1.1.10 and this user IP address is let's say 20.1.1.10. So 
10.1.1.10 cannot communicate with 20.1.1.10. Why? Because when 10.1.1.10 want to communicate with 20.1.1.1, this PC will forward packet to their default gateway means to router 1. And when router 1 will receive the packet, router 1 will compare destination IP address with routing table. So in packet destination IP address will be 20.1.1.1. 10 and there is no any route available for 20 network inside the routing table of router 1 so router 1 will discard the packet getting my point what i am saying when i will ping 20.10 from 10.10 .10, source ip will be 10.1.1.10 and destination ip will be 20.1.1.10 right this pc will forward packet to router router will compare destination ip address with routing table but inside the routing table of r1 there is no any route available for 20 network so router one will discard the packet so here you have a, a option to configure a static routing in last class we configured a static routing here right with the help of a static routing we can tell to router one that whenever you want to reach in 20 network you should forward traffic from fast ethernet 0 slash 1 or you should forward traffic to 12.2 because there is one route available for 12 network right so router one no 12 network router one no 10 network but router one don't know about 20 network so manually we can inject one entry inside the routing table of router one for 20 network in the same way we need to inject one route inside the routing table of router 2 which network this 10 network 10.1.1.0 slash 24 so this is a static routing right in dynamic routing here on this router we will run a process we will run a process like process can be ripped that is rip routing protocol here also and here also now these two router will automatically dynamically exchange their routing table router one will share their routing table to router two and router two will share their routing table to router one so when router one will share their routing table to router two router two will learn this network one this network this is a known network for router number two because router two already know 12 network right router one router one is giving two network to router number two 10 and 12 router two already know 12 but 10 network is unknown for router 2 so router 2 will learn 10 network via router number 1 in the same way router 1 will learn 20 network via router number 2 and both router will make entry in their routing table for indirectly connected network and then they can communicate with each other okay so this is basic fundamental of rip routing protocol or dynamic routing protocol now try to understand how rip routing protocol works so see guys as I told you, RIP stands for Routing Information Protocol. It is a distance vector routing protocol. Soon you will understand what is the meaning of distance vector routing protocol also. But before that, if you want to see the some properties of distance vector routing protocol, so here you can see properties of distance vector routing protocol. Distance in the network means number of hops. Number of hops. Hops means router router or l3 device it can be layer 3 switch also right it can be router also so distance means what how many hope away my network is like in this scenario for r1 20 network is one hope away between r1 and 20 network there are there is one router that is r2 that means 20 network is one hope away from router 1 in the same way uh, 10 network is one hope away from router number 2 so distance means number of hops and that means every distance vector routing protocol will calculate their best path on the basis of hop count on the basis of hop count all distance vector routing protocols will calculate their best path on the basis of hop count what it mean it mean let's say i have a topology like this r1 here r2 here r3 and here R4 and after that we have one router R5 R1 is connected with R2 R2 is connected with R5 like this like this and like this and R5 is connected with one network let's say 50.1.1.0 slash 24 and in this scenario we are running let's say rip routing protocol as you know rip is a distance vector routing protocol right so now R5 will advertise this network 50 network to router number 2 to router number 4 also router 4 will advertise it to router number 3 and then router 3 will advertise it to router number 1 and router 2 will also advertise 
same network to router number one. Now router one is getting same network information from two router, from two different router, from router two also and from router three also. Now router one need to decide which path is the best path, which path is the best path for me. So all distance vector routing protocol calculates their best path on the basis of hop count. From upper path, destination network is how many hop away guys? Two hop away, R2 and R5. And from the lower path, destination network is how many hope away? One hope, two hope, and three hope, right? So that means upper path is the best path. Upper path is the best path for R1 to reach in this network in 50.1.1.0 slash 24. Even let's say here we have less bandwidth. Here we have 10 Mbps bandwidth. Here also we have 10 Mbps bandwidth. And here we have, let's say, 100 Mbps bandwidth. Here, here we have, let's say, one gig bandwidth here also we have one gig bandwidth right so according to me best path is lower path because we have good bandwidth in lower path but according to distance vector routing protocol best path is upper path because distance vector routing protocols never check link properties distance vector routing protocols only check hop count right so shorter distance is best okay so this is first properties of property of distance vector routing protocol means distance vector routing protocol calculates their best path on the basis of hop count that means metric in distance vector routing protocol is number of hop right so in this scenario okay if i have a scenario like this r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 and R5 is connected with R3 and R3 is connected with one network 30.1.1.0 slash 24. So metric from upper path is going to be two here and metric from lower path is going to be three here and lower value is preferred, right? So uh, for R1, upper path is the best path to reach in 30 network, okay? And vector means Direction. Direction means what? Next hop. Next hop IP address is direction in network, right? So distance vector routing protocol always send periodic update to neighbor after periodic interval, right? This is second property. Third property of distance vector routing protocol, you can say. Third property of distance vector routing protocol means distance vector routing protocol will send periodic update after a specific interval of time. Let's say in this scenario, in this scenario, R1 have sent R1 have sent their routing table to R2, right? Right. R2 have learned this network 10.1.1.0 slash 24 is reachable via R1, right? Now R2 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 have this network information in their routing table, right? Now R2 don't need update message again from router number one, but as I told you, distance vector routing protocol sent periodic update. That means after some time, again, router one is going to send same update, same information to R2. After some time, again, it will send same information to R2. In the same way, R2 will also send periodic update to R1 after a specific interval of time. We will discuss about that timer also. Fine. So distance vector routing protocol always send periodic update. Even it is required or not required doesn't matter. Fine. Fourth properties is loop avoidance. How routing loop are prevented? So guys, for loop avoidance, we have a feature called a split horizon in distance vector routing protocol. A split horizon rule tell us, a split horizon tells that do not send update message from the receiving interface let's say r1 is see here r1 is advertising a network information to r2 so r2 is receiving a network information on this interface means r2 will never send a network information from this interface because this interface is receiving interface right on this interface router 2 is receiving a network information so r2 will never send a network information from same receiving interface this is a split horizon rule and if a split horizon rule is enabled on this interface, then router 2 will never send a network information from this interface, right? This is loop avoidance mechanism in case of distance vector routing protocol. And this is how loop will not form. Fine. 
if r2 is connected with one another router r3 definitely r2 will forward a network information to r3 from this interface right but if r2 is receiving a network information on this interface also then r2 will not send a network information from this interface right so a split horizon what is a split horizon and you can google it also like what is a split horizon same definition you will get there do not send update message from the same update message from the receiving interface do not send same update message from the receiving interface right so these are properties of distance vector routing protocol an example of distance vector routing protocol is rip rip and eigrp both are distance vector routing protocol after that we have link state routing protocol we will discuss later fine so let's come on rip again so whatever properties we had discussed in distance vector routing protocol rip is going to use those all properties because rip is an distance vector routing protocol fine so here you can see it is a distance vector routing protocol it is an application layer protocol it's work at application layer means layer 7 ad value of rip is 120 as you know what is ad value ad stand for administrative distance ad value define which route is more reliable which route is reliable more reliable less reliable right so ad value define reliability of a route reliability of a route lower ad value means more reliable higher ad value means low reliable fine after that as you know in osi model we discussed two protocol at transport layer tcp and udp tcp and udp so rip is a protocol which uses udp at transport layer udp at transport layer fine routing information protocol is a distance vector routing protocol which it use which use hop count as a metric as a routing metric the largest number of hop allowed for rip is 15 right we can uh, not connect more than 15 router in rip routing protocol which limit the size of network that rip can support so rip can support up to 15 router in a series okay rip implementation rip implements the split horizon rod poisoning and hold on time mechanism to prevent incorrect routing information but you can say to prevent loop to prevent loop rip huge split horizon rod poisoning and hold on time mechanism okay guys after that rip version one router broadcast update with their routing table after every 30 seconds as i told you distance vector routing protocol send periodic update so after every 30 seconds a rip enabled routers send update to their neighbor after each 30 seconds after every 30 seconds a rip enabled router will send update message to their neighbor fine so these are basic things after that we have timers like routing information protocol use following timer update timer as you know update timer is 30 second means after every 30 second it will send one update message to their neighbor then invalid timer invalid timer is 180 second if a router will not receive update message for a network till 180 second then router will declare that network as invalid after that flush timer if router will not receive any update message for 240 second then router will flush that network from their routing table from their database and hold on timer is 180 second whenever router will receive update message router will keep that network information in their database for 180 second for 180 second then we have two version in rip routing protocol version one and version two we will see the difference between version 1 and version 2 now what is the command to enable rip routing protocol so guys command to enable rip routing protocol is here you can see this is my topology r1 r2 on r1 you will run this command router rip then you can define version version 1 version can be 1 or version can be 2 right we have two version then no auto summary by default automatic summarization is enabled in rip and after that with the help of network command we can advertise interfaces in rip routing protocol like when i will run network 10.0.0.0 once i will run this command router will check 10 network is running on which interface so 10 network is running on this interface router will simply enable rip here router will enable rip see any routing protocols rip it can be rip it can be eigrp it can be ospf it can be bgp these routing protocol not work on router these routing protocols work on interfaces of router right like you can see with the help of network command we are enabling 
reprotein protocol on interfaces with the help of this command router rip this command will simply allocate some memory for reprotein protocol this command will allocate some memory for reprotein protocol right it will separate some memory for reprotein protocol right after that with the help of network command we will enable rip on interfaces when i will run this network command 12.0.0.0 again router will check this network is running on this which interface so this network is running on this interface so router will enable rip routing protocol on this interface fine and once we will enable rip on both interface both router will start sending update messages right from both in uh, router will start sending update messages from both interface in the same way these are the command to enable rip on router number 2 then router 2 will also start sending update message from these two interfaces right and this is how router 1 and router 2 can learn in directly connected network and then they can communicate with each other okay after that router is sending update message from lan interface also like here also router is sending update message but update message is not required on lan interface because here pc is connected or switch is connected right so sw what switch will do with update message or what router will do, sorry pc will do with update message so here we need to stop update message also so we will see how we can stop update message of rip on lan interface fine then we have some different uh, you know comparison between rip version 1 and rip version 2 comparison between rip version 1 and rip version 2 so if i will talk about rip version 1 so rip version 1 sent update message on broadcast address and rip version 2 sent update message on multicast address on this multicast address 224.0.0.9 rip version 1 is a class full network and rip version 2 is a classless network the classless routing protocol rip version 1 is class full routing protocol and Uh, rip version 2 is classless routing protocol that means rip version 1 does not support subnetting right rip version 1 does not support subnetting and rip version 2 support subnetting okay rip version 1 does not support authentication also and rip version 2 support md5 authentication so we can configure authentication also in rip version 2 after that what is drawback of rip drawback of rip is guys first is hop count that I, as i told you only 15 hops are allow in rip then matrix matrix is hop count here matrix should be depend on link properties not depend on hop count so this is also one disadvantage of distance vector routing protocol or you can say rip routing protocol here rip routing protocol is going to calculate matrix on the basis of hop count right after that slow topology convergence whenever change will occur right to it topology will takes around 30 second to update their database it will take 30 second to update their database after that periodic update the third fourth disadvantage is periodic update why router is sending periodic update after each and every 30 second right because after every 30 second update is not required it can increase network traffic and then last disadvantage is routing by rumors because of these all disadvantage we come up with next routing protocol that is eigrp now let's understand these all things practically okay i am going to configure i am going to first design one network in gns3 and see how we can configure rip routing protocol and what are the uh, you know features available in sysquires So let's say here I have one router R one, then R two. First of all, we will configure rip between two router. After that, I will design another topology. Let's say here I have one LAN. I'm getting some noise from somewhere. Please mute yourself, guys.
yes this is my topology between router 1 and router 2 i am going to use 2l network 12.1.1.0/24 and here we are going to use this network 10.1.1.0/24 and let's say here we have one network 20.1.1.0/24 20.1.1.0/24 see how we will configure the protein protocol here first of all let me turn on the device now i am going to access router 1 and router 2 first of all we will configure ip addresses on both routers and then we will configure reprotein protocol c Hope command line is visible to everyone. What does no auto summary means do? No auto summary means, okay, I am explaining it. Don't worry. Here I will explain everything practically. Let me configure IP first on R1. Config T. Interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Say no set and IP address 12.1.1.1.255.255.255.0. This is IP address on fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 of router 1. Then interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. Say no set. And IP address 10.1.1.1.255.255.255.0. Exit. Right? Now, so IP interface brief exclude unassigned. So these are IP configuration here. Now we can check routing table also. So IP route inside the routing table of R1, we are able to see two network. One is 10.1.1.0/24 and another one is 12.1.1.0/24. Fine. Let me configure R2. IP addresses on R2. Interface fast Ethernet 0/0. Say no set. And IP address 12.1.1.2255. 255.255.255.0 exit interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 say no set and here also i am going to define ip 20.1.1.1255.255.255.0 exit here also you can see the routing table of r2 so ip route inside the routing table of r2 also we are able to see directly connected network 12 network and 20 network right so now 10.1 cannot communicate with 20.1, right? Because R1 don't know about 20 network and R2 don't know about 10 network. So here we need to configure one routing protocol. Either I can configure a static routing or I can configure dynamic routing. So I'm going to enable configure RIP routing protocol here. First, I will run router RIP. Router RIP. Guys, after running this command, if I will run how to verify is any routing protocol running on router or not so i can run this command so ip protocol so inside by running this command so ip protocol we are able to see no any routing protocol is running on this router so as you can see here i have run router rip command but routing protocol is not enabled as i told you routing protocols work on interfaces of router so until and unless i will not advertise an interface in rip routing protocol rip will not enable here this command router rip will only allocate some memory fine so let me do one thing again router rip and this time i am going to define network 10.1.1.0 10.1.1.0 once i will hit enter router one will check this network is running on which interface and this network is running on which interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 so router 1 will enable rip on fast ethernet 1 slash 0 and guys my network is classless this is class net less network this ip address uh, th this network belongs to class a and it is subnetted it is subnetted it is not class full class full is 10.0.0.0 class full network is 10.0.0.0 and you can see here if i will run so ip protocol command now to verify routing protocol so ip protocol so you can see the output routing protocol is rip we are running which routing protocol rip these are timer invalid timer hold on timer flush timer 
update timer right and we are performing routing for which network for 10.0.0.0 for 10.0.0.0 why because as i told you rip version 1 does not support classless routing right so even i have defined network classless network but router have considered that as a class full network as a class full network and you can see distance means administrative distance value is 120 point maximum path that this router can install is four and we have enabled the protein protocol on fast ethernet one slash zero it can send update message where we are running the version one it can receive update message of the version one and the version two right send it can send update message where we are running reversion 1 and it can receive update message of reversion 1 and reversion 2 also. And automatic network summarization is in effect. That means automatic summarization is enabled. Automatic summarization is enabled. Automatic summarization enabled means what? If I am defining this network, 10.1.1.0 so router will consider router will summarize this network to 10.0.0.0 this is the meaning of automatic summarization so here if i will disable automatic summarization then also you will see network is uh, we are performing uh, routing for 10.0.0.0 network for classful network why because rip version 1 does not support classless network router rip and say no auto summary this command will disable automatic summarization earlier here we can see automatic network summarization is in effect and now if i will run command so ip protocol so we are able to see automatic network summarization is not in effect is not in effect but still we are performing routing for classful network right because rip version 1 does not support classless network okay now we have enabled rip on fast ethernet 1 slash 0 now we need to enable rip on fast ethernet 0 slash 0 also so let me run one more network command here router rip router rip and network 12.1.1.0 now so ip protocol you can see we are performing routing for uh, we have enabled rip routing protocol on these two interface on fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and fast ethernet 1 slash 0 on these two interfaces rip protocol is enabled and now router one is sending update message from these two interface how we can verify that we can debug rip debug ip rip events now we can see router one is sending any update message or not so yes router is sending see rip sending version one update to broadcast address via fast ethernet 1 slash 0 so it is sending one update message from fast ethernet 1 slash 0 it is also sending one update message from fast ethernet 1 slash 0 and it should send update message from fast ethernet 0 slash 0 also so ip interface brief yes it is sending update message from fast ethernet 0 slash 0 also you can see okay so router one is sending update message from both interface and inside that update message if you want to see the update message i can capture this link let me capture this link in wiresar let me show you update message see this is update message who is sending source ip is 12.1.1.1 means router one destination ip address is broadcast 255.255.255.255 right if i will open this message so you can see at layer 4 we are using udp protocol user datagram protocol source port number is 520 destination port number is 520 so 520 port number is reserved for rip routing protocol rip is an application layer protocol which uses udp port number 520 at transport layer right it uses ad value 120 okay now i am going to open this update message this is actual update message of rip so inside this actual update message guys router one is sharing which network 10 network right because 12 network is common see 
router one is forwarding this update message from fast ethernet 0 slash 0 so router one will never include network which is running on this interface so that's why router one is not sending 2l network in the update message router is sending only 10 network 10.1.1.0 slash 24 okay after that with this network router is sending some more information like metric what is metric so it is telling to router 2 metric for you is going to be what one that means 10 network is one hope away from you one hope away from you so you can see metric value is one it is sharing this network information right 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0. fine but on router number two on router number two so ip route see router two have not learned 10 network till now reason is what reason is on router number two we have not enabled reprotting protocol we have not enabled reprotting protocol till now so that's why router one is sending update message to router two but router two is discarding that router two is discarding that update message so let me configure rip on router two also very quickly let me configure it router rip and say network 20.1.1.0 and network 12.1.1.0 and now so ip protocol you can see you i have enabled reporting protocol on both interface on fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and fast ethernet 1 slash 0 and now if you will check routing table so ip route you can just wait soon this router will learn 10 network yes now you can see this router router 2 have learned this network through rip routing protocol this r stand for rip r stand for rip okay so router 2 have learned this network 10.0.0.0 slash 8 through rip routing protocol reachable via 12.1 and uh, router 2 have learned just four seconds ago this network and on which interface on fast ethernet 0 slash 0 in the same way if you will check routing table of router 1 also so ip route so router 1 have also learned 20 network through rip routing protocol and now these two network can communicate with each other ping 20.1.1.1 and source 10.1.1.1 see ping is working Any question till here? Please let me know in chat. How to enable RIP? Any question till here, guys? Okay. How to set the matrix on the RIP? How to set metric? Yeah. No, metric, metric for this network is what? One. Means this network is one hope away. You cannot set metric manually. Router will calculate metric automatically, dynamically. No, when we call on uh, BGP, right? We need to set metric, right? No, in BGP also, in BGP, we don't have metric, by the way. BGP use IGP protocols metric, right? In BGP, best path selection is happened on the basis of attributes. So we have some types of attributes in BGP for best path selection. In rip routing protocol, again, we have metric for best path selection. So router calculates metric on the basis of what? On the basis of hop count. Hop count, okay. Right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now, here we have one problem. See, problem is what? So IP route rip. Inside the rip routing protocol, we are able to see 20.0.0.0 slash 8 network. But this is summarized network. This is class full network, right? I want to advertise 20.1.1.0 slash 24. This network with slash 24. So what I can do? I can change the version of RIP because RIP version 1 does not support class full routing, but RIP version 2 can support class full routing. So here I can change the version, but before changing version, I want to show you something else. If here I will debug 
IP RIP event again. So see, router one is sending the RIP, RIP update message from both interface, from fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 also, and from fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 also. But router one should not send RIP update message from fast Ethernet 1 slash 0, because 1 slash 0 is my LAN interface, right? So I want to stop RIP update message from fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. So I can configure fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 as passive interface as a passive interface. So always keep in mind, router never send update message from passive interface. Now you can see it is sending update message from fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 also and from 0 slash 0 also, right? Let me disable the debugging and let me configure passive interface. Router rip and simply I can say passive interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. After running this command, router will stop sending update message from fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. You can verify it by debugging IP RIP events. Now you will see router 1 will send update message only on fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Now you can see it is sending update message from fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 only. Fine guys. On all. On router number 2 also, I need to configure passive interface. Router, RIP, passive interface, fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. Fine. And now I am going to change version. On router number 1, I am going to set version 2. Router, RIP, version two and on router number two also router rip version two. Now we are running rip version two on router number one and on router number two. If you will run so IP protocol command here, so IP protocol. See, we can verify multiple things with the help of this command, like which interface is passive interface. So here you can see passive interfaces, fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. And this time, this router can send update message to RIP version 2 router, and it can receive update message from RIP version 2 router. Right? That means we are running RIP version. And RIP version 1 and RIP version 2, both are not compatible with each other. And automatic summarization is not in effect. We are performing routing for this network and this network. And this time, so IP route, just wait for some time. Soon this, this network is going to be classless. Clear IP RIP. So IP RIP database. So yes, now you can see this router have installed this network with slash 24 is connected on fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. This is with automatic summarization and this is classless network, right? So now on router number 1, 420 network, it's still say so showing 20.0.0.0 on router number 2, so IP route rip so you can see router 2 have now learned classless network this network 10.1.1.0 slash 24 not with slash 28 and after some time it will remove this entry after flush time it will remove this entry on router number one also so ip route rip when Router 1 will receive update message from router number 2. This network is going to be classless. Just wait for some time. On router number 2, I have set version 2 or not. So IP protocol. Yes, version 2 is running here. Interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 says shut down or not shut down. First, for faster convergence, I have shut down the interface and then again I have no shut the interface. And so IP route rip. Now we have only this network here 
and on daughter number one also so ip route you can see 20 dot 0.0.0 slash 8 i think there is misconfiguration so run so run interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 let me check running configuration of this interface so here i have defined network with slash 24 so ip rip database inside the database it have installed this network that is fine so it should advertise it with two router number one also it's taking some time actually rip is a slow routing protocol still this router you know actually what is happening on router number two so ip protocol automatic summarization is enabled automatic summarization is in effect so that's why actually router 2 is summarizing this network 20 network right so here also i need to disable automatic summarization say router rip and no auto summary and now on router number two wait yes now you can see router one have received this classless network on fast ethernet slash zero and after after flush time router will remove this entry this entry flush time is so ip protocol flush time is you can see 240 seconds so after 240 seconds this router is going to flush this entry so this is also one problem of rip right and because it should flush this entry immediately right so here flush time is 240 seconds so after 240 seconds it will flush this entry right and again it can communicate these two and can communicate with each other 20.1.1.10 source is 10.1.1.10 see ping is working clear now i'm going to design different topology let me check i have topology or not Rip, rip, rip. Okay, let me design one topology here. Let me delete this topology. Hope this is clear. This is basic configuration and this configuration is clear to everyone, guys. Here we can run some more command. First is show IP protocol. First troubleshooting command. With the help of this command, we can check on which interfaces RIP is enabled or it is sending update message. It is sending update message from fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 only now. Because fast Ethernet 0, 1 slash 0 is no passive interface. Here we can see distance value. We can see check, uh, you know, last update. We can check uh, automatic summarization is enabled or disabled. We can check for which network we are performing routing. We can uh, check timers. Right. Sending update after every 30 seconds. So, this router is sending update message after every 30 seconds to their neighbor. This is also one disadvantage of reprouting protocol. Now, guys, I'm going to design, uh, you know, another topology. Let's say I have topology like this. R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. Let's say this is my topology. And on R5, I have one LAN network. R5 is connected with one, let's say switch, where we are running one network.
let's say this network 50 dot 1.1.0 slash 24. So in this scenario, R5 will advertise this 50 network to router number 2 and to router number 4. Router 4 will advertise it to router number 3. Router 3 will advertise it to router number 1. And router 2 will also advertise same network to router number 1, right? So router 1 will receive 50 network from two neighbor, from two side, from router 2 also and from router 3 also. So router 1 need to choose which path is the best path. So how router 1 will choose best path? With the help of metric. So metric on upper path is metric on upper path is two because destination network is two hope away from upper path and from the lower path destination network is three hope away. So which path is best? Upper path is the best path. Upper path is the best path. Let me configure the scenario. See between router, like between router one and router two, I can use any network. That is not our concern, right? Between router one and router three, between router three, four, between router four and five, right? So I am going to use 12 network between router one and router two, 12.1.1.0 slash 24. Between router two and router five, I am going to use 25 network, 25.1.1.0 slash 24. Between router 1 and router 3, I am going to use 13 network, 13.1.1.0 slash 24. Between router 3 and router 4, I am going to use 34 network, 34.1.1.0 slash 24. And between router 4 and router 5, I am going to use 45 network, 45.1.1.0 slash 24. Right? Let me access these devices. Okay. And now let me configure IP. Config T interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 IP address is 12.1.1 12.1.1 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
address 34.1.4.255.255.0 exit interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 say no set and IP address over here is 45.1.1.4.255.255.0 exit router rip version 2 no auto summary and network 34.1.1.0 and network 45.1.1.0 done then R5 config T interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 say no set IP address 25.1.1.5.255.255.255.0 exit interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 no set and IP address is 45.1.1.5.255.255.255.0 exit interface fast Ethernet 1 slash 1 no set and IP address 50.1.1.1255.255.255.0 guys if you want to advertise all active interface in rip routing protocol then you can run network 0.0.0, .0 command network 0.0.0.0 0.0.0.0 network command will you know uh, advertise all active interfaces in the routing protocol so like here router rip version 2 and say no auto summary and i can run network 0.0.0 0.0.0 this command will enable rip on all interfaces so you can verify it by running command so ip protocol you can see RIP is enabled on these all interfaces. We are doing routing for all network for 0.0.0.0. .0. Correct. Automatic summarization is not in effect. We have disabled it. Now I am going to take you to R1. And on R1, let me show you routing table. So IP route RIP. Guys, inside the RIP routing table, we are able to see 50 network, 50.1.1.0. And metric is Two. As I told you, this network is two hop away, and this network is reachable via which next hop 12.1.1.2 means via router number two. Why the router one have installed this network via router number two? Why router two is best path? Because from router number two, it is getting this prefix with metric two, and from router number three, it is getting same network information with metric three. So IP RIP database see inside the database we are able to see 50 network is reachable via 12.2 9 second ago on fast ethernet 0 slash 0 metric is 2 but if fast ethernet 0 slash 0 will goes down then definitely router 1 will install this network information from router number 3 let me do that interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 shut down if this interface will goes down then what will happen so ip route rip now 50 network is not available so ip rip database now 50 network is reachable via 13.1.1.3 means via router number 3 and here metric is you can see 3 metric is 3 so from lower path router 1 is calculating 3 metric from upper path router 1 is calculating 2 metric so lower metric is best lower metric is preferred so that's why router one is preferred to upper path okay so if i will again run no set command on fast ethernet 0 slash 0 say no set it will install upper path in their routing table so ip route rip you can see now 50 network is again reachable via 12.2 means via router number two clear mobile yang hmm. yang hot yang panas tapi yeah. oke okay. hmm. okay, now see guys some commands router rip and if you don't know how many command I can run here so you can put question mark here so see these all command is acceptable here in this mode 
we can say default metric we can say distance value we can use distribute list for route filtering this is this is advanced things right part of ccnp we can filter prefixes with the help of prefix list then we can use network command here we can use offset list we can use passive interface command we can use redistribute we can use timer like if i want to change update timer or uh, hello hello timer so sorry update timer flush time hold on time if you want to manipulate this timer you can use timer command you can use version command here right so like here if i will say default default and then you can use these all command like default timer default network default metric i am interested in this default metric and see if you want to set a metric you can set in this range let's say metric i am going to set 10 then put question mark it's clear so now here we have set metric what 10 now if router 1 will advertise any prefix 2 dear neighbor it will advertise with metric what 10 so if i will set default metric 10 on router 5 if i will def set default metric 10 on router 5 then what will happen default metric 10 now you can see on router number 1 so ip route rip r5 so ip rip database 450 network 50 network is directly connected here on r4 so ip rip database 450 network metric is 1 but r5 should advertise its network with metric 10 why it is advertising with metric 1 let me do one thing interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 say shutdown and then again say no shutdown so ip rip database this is because of gns3 okay leave it for now now come to r1 50 network is reachable with metric 2 from upper path that is okay router rip default metric 10 here we don't have option right to define next hop to define ip address okay like timer basic we can set you know uh interval update interval for rip by default 30 second if i want to set let's say 10 second means after every 10 second you should send one update message i want to set invalid timer 100 second i want to set hold on timer 100 second i want to set flush time 100 second so now after running this command router one will advertise any prefix to their neighbor with this timer with this timer so router let's say router one is advertising one network to router two so router two will keep that network information for 100 second hold on time is 100 second right flush time is also 100 second right invalid time is also 100 second so after 100 second router two will declare that uh, network is invalid they after 100 second they will flush that entry get a point so this is how we can change timer also then we have many more options, but these all are not for CCNA, like address family is for CCNP, automatic summarization is for CCNA. Here we have one default information originate command that is also part of CCNP, right? Here we can set distance value, like by default distance value is what? Do so IP route. See for 50 network, for 50 network distance value is 120 120 but if i want to change distance i can change it i can say distance let's say 200 so ip route 
rip so ip dot rip here i have set distance value 200 and on r5 also i am going to set distance value 200 distance 200 from my specific source also i can set it right i can define source also like on router number one see on router number one if i am checking routing table so inside the routing table 50 network is reachable via router number two but i want to forward packet in 50 network via router number three so what i can do i can increase some distance value via router number two i can tell to router one see how router rip i can tell to router one please huge distance value 200 from router number two right i can say distance distance 200 from a specific neighbor from what source 12.1.1.2 whenever you will receive update message from 12.1.1.2 you should huge distance value 200 and now if you will check routing table so ip dot rip you can see 50 network is reachable via router number two with what ad value distance value is now 200 and the router three is not advertising i think i have changed distance value for all prefixes router rip no distance 200 and then i am going to say distance 200 from this neighbor so ip route rip so here distance value is 200 and from router number 3 oh i think see here on router number 5 i need to remove this command first say no and then then you can see 50 network is now reachable via router 3 why because from router number 2 it is getting distance 200 and from router number 3 it is getting distance 120 right so lower value is always preferred lower value is always preferred so because of that now 50 network is reachable via router number 3 so first router will compare what ad value then matrix if ad value will tie then only it will compare metric so let me remove distance command router rip no distance 200 from 12.1.2.0.0.0 now it will receive same distance value from both neighbor so ip route rip so it will compare what metric and metric is list on upper path because of that you can see again 50 network is reachable via router 2 then this is distance and after that router rip default metric why this command is not working okay leave this command this command will work in case of redistribution so here we have discussed this command automatic summary summarization we have discussed distance command we have discussed exit we have discussed maximum path like here you can see maximum path so ip protocol this router can install how many path four path in their routing table this router can install four paths in their routing table. This router can install four paths in their routing table. If I want to change this value, like I want router one should install only one path in their routing table. So I can use this command router rip and maximum path one. Now you can see so IP protocol. Maximum path is now one. 
now it can not install more than one path in their routing table even metric and distance both are same then also it can not install more than one path in their routing table but if you want to install more than one path or four path eight paths you can configure it next router rip put question mark here and see the next option we can set maximum path we can use neighbor command a specify neighbor router like you know we can say neighbor 12.1.1.2 and for this neighbor we can enable bft so this is not for you this is also ccnp concept here we can use timer i have used this timer redistribute passive interface here you can use offset list this is also part of ccnp right so these are part of ccna like you should change version here you should change timer here you should configure passive interface here you should run network command here you should configure maximum path here you should configure distance value here you should configure you know automatic summarization right these commands are for ccna in reporting protocol just give me one second guys one minute this is all about rip now we have next protocol eagrp before that i want to show you something here yes you can uh, learn reporting protocol with this pdf file guys this is good oh this is like summary note by the way i will share my note also with you in whatsapp group here also you can see what is reporting protocol rip is an a standard distance vector routing protocol design for use in a small network as i told you rip support up to 15 hops only rip was one of the first true distance vector routing protocol and is supported on a wide variety of system rip address to the flowing distance vector characteristic it sent periodic update after every 30 second rip sent out full routing update after every 30 second after periodic interval of time whatever time you you have set you can change this timer as you know this is by default timer rip uses a form of distance as its metric distance as a metric and distance means as you know hop count right so hop count is metric in rip rip uses bellman for distance vector algorithm for best path selection other characteristic of rip routing protocol is it rip support ip ipx routing rip utilize udp port number 520 rip distance value is administrative distance value is 120 it support maximum hop 
15. Any network that is 16 hop away or more is considered unreachable, right? If a network, if a router is receiving a network which is 16 hop away, so router will consider that network as unreachable, right? Thus, maximum diameter of network is 15 hops, okay? A matrix of 16 hop in RIP is considered as poison root or infinite matrix. If multiple paths exist to a particular destination, RIP will perform load balancing between those paths. Like let's say I have a topology like this R1 connected with R2, R3, R4 like this. Here R4 is connected with one network, let's say 40.1.1.0 slash 24. So in this scenario, R1 will receive 40 network from two sides with same matrix with same AD value 120 and with same metric, right, 2, 2. So this time router 1 will install both path in their routing cable and it will perform load balancing. It will perform load balancing, okay. Load balancing between those paths and it can um, perform load balancing up to four paths. Only if the metric means hop count is equal. RIP uses round robin system for load balancing means first come first out between equal metric lot which can lead the congestion. For example, two paths might exist to a particular destination, one going through a 9600 bold link and other via a T1. If the metric is equal, RIP perform load balancing, sending an equal amount of traffic down 9600 build link and T1. Okay, so if router is calculating equal metric for let's say uh, four paths, so definitely it will install all paths in their routing table and it will, it will forward equal number of traffic from each path. Okay, then we have two version in RIP as I told you, RIP version 1 and RIP version Two. Difference is RIP version 1 is a classful routing protocol, does not support sub, uh, subnetting, does not include subnet mask in the update message, right? So RIP version 1 never sends subnet mask in the update message, okay? So because RIP version 1 does not support VLSM or you can say subnetting. When using RIP version 1, network must be contiguous and subnet of major network must be configured with identical mask. Like if you are using IP address from class A, so submit mask should be 8. Submit mask should be 255.0.0.0, right? If you are using subnetted network in RIP version 1, so RIP version 1 will consider that as a class full network, right? So this is problem of RIP version 1. That's the reason why we are not using RIP version 1 nowadays, right? We are not using RIP version 1 nowadays. Other enhancement, in RIP version 2, RIP version 2 send their update message on multicast address. After that here, we can configure authentication also in RIP version 2, right? RIP version 2 can support classless routing also. Route tagging is also supported in RIP version 2. RIP version 2 can inter, uh, interoperate with RIP version 1 by default. RIP version 1 router will send only version 1 packet. RIP version 1 sent RIP version 1 packet only. RIP version 1 can receive packet of RIP version 1 and RIP version 2. RIP version 2 router will support both, can send and receive version 2 update, not version 1. So that's why I, I told you RIP version 1 and 2 are not compatible with each other, right? Getting my point. RIP version 1, RIP version 1 can send update message to version 1 and can receive message to version 1 and version 2. RIP version 2 can send update message to version 2 only and can receive update message from version 2 only, right? RIP version 2 cannot receive any update message of RIP version 1. So these are some difference between RIP version 1 and RIP version 2. Then basic configuration are there, like you can see how we can enable RIP in this scenario. We have two router, both are directly connected with each other. Both have one LAN. So how we will configure RIP protocol here. This is configuration. After that, these are verification commands. So IP route, so IP route on router B. 
then limitation of as i told you that limitation is first limitation is hop count hop count only 15 hops are allowed in the example previous space worked fine with the version 1 because the network was considered the submit mask here you can see we are using classless network in this network we are running classless network this is limitation of version 1 here we can't if we will configure if version 1 you know there will be some problem because this router will consider this network as 10.0.0.0 and between router a and router b also we are using subnet subnetted network so router will consider 10.0.0.0 network right so now router a cannot differentiate between this network and this network so here i can't use rip version 1 you should configure rip version 2 here okay after that limitation of reversion one again same things here limitation of reversion one reversion two configuration in configuration just you need to add this command router rip then version two and after that you network command and uh, no auto summary this command is used to disable automatic summarization after that timers are there update timer by default 30 second invalid timer by default 180 second hold on time by default 180 second right plus time by default 40 second then rip timer configuration we can manipulate timer with the help of this command timer basic then loop avoidance mechanism as i told you sp horizon is used to prevent loop see what is sp horizon prevent a routing update from being sent or the interface it was received on okay root poisoning passive interface configuration you should configure passive interface to lan interface so that rip should not send any update message from lan interface then neighbor ship in rip this is very easy after that authentication configuration if you want to configure authentication you can use this command like you need to create one key can first then you need to define key number key a string this is my password my password on router number b also we will create one key chain key, we will define key number key a string so key a string should be same on both router then only routers will exchange routing table so this is authentication configuration after that these are part of again ccnp this is ccnp book that's it this is all about rip routing protocol guys this is all about rip routing protocol now in next class we will start eigrp routing protocol Yes, we are not using RIP routing protocol nowadays, but to understand, you know, EIGRP routing protocol or other routing protocols, OSPF, you have to learn RIP also. Without learning RIP routing protocol, you can't understand EIGRP. Okay. So I have finished RIP routing protocol in next video, in next class, I will start EIGRP. Please tell about automatic summarization. Guys, as I told you, see, let's say I have one router here, R1. R1 is connected with R2. Here we are running RIP routing protocol. Find And R2 have some network here. 10.1.1.0 slash 24. 10.1.2.0 slash 24. 10.1.3.0 slash 24. Right? All are different submit. All are different submit, but if automatic summarization is enabled on router number one, then router one will summarize these all network, right? Router one will advertise one single summary network to router number two, that is 10.0.0.0. If you will disable automatic summarization on router number one, then router one will advertise these all individual prefixes to router number two. 
So this is benefit of automatic summarization. RIP protocol support equal cost load balancing. Yes, RIP routing protocol support equal cost load balancing. Automatic summarization is used for local network also and for received network also. Sure, sure, I will send PDF in group. I'm sending here. I'm requesting to CDP to share this file in group. Any other question? Nice session. Thank you. Next class is tomorrow. Tomorrow we will learn EIGRP protocol. Sir, can you get the, your handout? Your... Uh, this one? Yeah, the subcopy of the handout. This one? Uh, the the, uh, the doc, uh, MS Word file. MS Word file. Yeah. This one. Okay, you're talking about this one, this file. Okay, I will share that one also in group. Thank you. You will get certificate at the end of training, at the end of this month. Okay, guys, then please share your review. Um, certificate. Sorry. Yes, for yes. the certificate, we need to attend uh, any um, exam? No, no, no. You need to attend only classes. All right. Okay. Thank you. When is the training end? At the end of this month. Okay. Uh, Profile, after uh, further uh, this one uh, certification, we do need to contact the CDP. Yes. For paid course, like you, you know, these are very basic things only. In REAP, there are lots of things. Right? These yeah, are yeah. basic. Just I have given you one overview of REAP routing protocol. But if you want to learn like deeply each routing protocols, then you have to enroll yourself for paid course. All right. Okay. Thank you. Can you send PDF? of all lectures. Yes, we are sending PDF of all lecture day by days. Sir, then ACL, Active Directory, BZP will covered. This topic will covered in paid class, brother. BZP and Active Directory, ACL. I will give you overview of ACL as well here at in this session, but we'll not discuss in detail. Okay, guys, then bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Thanks for joining. Please share your review on CDP network.
बाय बाय एम टी फाइव इज एन एलगोरिथम एम टी फाइव इज एन एलगोरिथम इज ए पार्ट ऑफ सिक्योरिटी राइट आंसर ऑफ एम टी फाइव इज नॉट इन ए सिंगल वर्ड और इन सिंगल सेंटेंस सो लाइक आई कैन सी आंसर डायरेक्टली बट इट इज एन एलगोरिथम यूज इन नेटवर्क सिक्योरिटी okay you can watch video on youtube on md5 to learn it